girlfriend of six years left me. Original post. As the title says, girlfriend of six years left me for someone she only met online and never met in real life. She took everything from our joint wedding account, while I'm busting myself off working 12-hour shifts for the past year to get her dream wedding. Yes, even during this pandemic. Believe it or not, she met the guy playing a mobile dance dance sort of game, and suddenly told me she feels an instant connection and chemistry that we never had. Can't do anything about the account as it's a joint account, and both parties can withdraw with no problem. I'm in a city far away from home, working for a job I don't enjoy, for something that's never gonna happen. I'm just lost. I don't even know what to do anymore. Thanks for reading strangers, sorry I took your time. Now for the top advice before reading the updates. That's terrible, I'm so sorry. Well, in case she comes running back when it doesn't work out, get her name off the lease, change your bank account or paycheck deposit, and anything else you share. Best of luck, looks like she saved you the hassle of a divorce attorney. I closed the account. We have not been living together since September 2019 due to me moving for work. Went back monthly just so that she wouldn't feel lonely or anything. Doesn't have the heart to tell my parents about this yet, or even how to start, as they really love my ex and thought we end up together. Not to mention my mom has a heart condition. I'm just staring at the phone, reading messages and deleting photos. That sickening feeling in your heart. You didn't do anything wrong, she flaked out and didn't hold true to the commitment. You should confide in them, you'll feel better. They loved her because you did, they were happy because you were. Don't be embarrassed or ashamed. This is on her, not you. Call her out on her nonsense. You know what hurts? I feel like I lost to someone. Like I'm racking my brains if I'm at fault in a way. I mean, how could one just leave a six-year relationship for someone they met only in a game, and never in real life? Am I that bad of a boyfriend that another dude with a phone can easily do this? I will tell my parents, it's just I needed time to process this. At the same time, I need to choose my words carefully. They know her parents, so I want it to end here, not wanting it to be blown out of proportion. It would still be hard to explain the money thing I guess, me being foolish enough to get a joint account. Foolish enough to trust. It's okay man, as someone said, look on the bright side, better to know now than after the marriage. Life happens, reinvent yourself and make new friends. Making friends isn't exactly my forte. That is why I turn here for advice, no real life friends, or at least close ones that I feel safe to share problems with. I am trying to look on the bright side, but it's still cloudy seeing that just happened to me yesterday. Honestly, I think I just need some pep talk from strangers and to know that I'm not at fault. She did say she acted like this because I chose work over her, didn't give her enough attention. But I went to see her every month, text and video calls all the time. I don't even know what to do anymore. In a start work soon, let's see if that takes this of my mind. Thank you for the advice. Chose work over her. What is this? A 90s movie starring Tim Allen. She sure as heck didn't care about taking it though, for someone so mad about you earning it. Well, that's not exactly what was said. It's more like I'm willing to move away to a better paying job and leaving her type of thing. I don't know man, I'm confused. Now for the updates. I informed her father about the situation, and he is not happy to say the least. He asked for my bank statement to work out how much of the money in the joint account that was mine, and he will work out a payment plan. I don't know whether it's from him as he is retired, or from her. My ex is angry obviously. She is saying I'm immature for involving her parents on our issue when we should just settle it like two adults. Now I'm getting barraged of calls and texts from her and her friends. Didn't bother picking up or reading it. All this while I'm at work. Total headache moment. Second update. Both my parents and her requested a meet tomorrow to discuss things. Except for the payment plan, I don't know what's there to discuss about to be honest. Leave approved, we'll drive back home tonight. I still love her, but as most of you pointed out, bullet dodged in major red flag. Not gonna lie, still don't know what will happen when I see her tomorrow face to face. Third update. Arrived safely at home, my parents are supportive. They didn't ask me anything, just ate dinner and had small talks. Tried asking for their opinion, but they just told me to get a good night's sleep and not think things tonight. I don't know if I'm capable of not thinking things tonight. Especially when I'm drawing a blank on what to say or how to act. It's decided that we will meet them for lunch tomorrow. My parents want me to make my own decision, as they refuse to give opinions so that I won't be influenced by them. They won't even answer when I ask them about the money. My father just said, it is your money, your joint account. Now for the fourth and full update. Sorry I took my time, still processing what happened to my supposedly carefully laid plan to get married in September this year lol. The meat could have gone better. My ex went out, probably thinking of skipping it altogether, but her father made her come back home. 
During the meeting, her mom took her side surprisingly, saying the same things my ex did yesterday. I'm not here, can't blame her for being lonely, I'm just being unreasonable and overly jealous about the whole thing, and so on. Her mom also justified her taking the money by saying, I know it's wrong for her to do so, but under the circumstances, you should understand. She deserves it as her dowry or present, because you wasted her time for six years, kept her waiting for nothing. I let her talk, as my father told me prior to the meet, to let whoever who's doing the talking finish and just listen. It might be all the emotion talking without much sense included. After all the yelling, I stated that I'm not here to justify, clarify or blame anyone or anything. I'm here solely because I want to know the status of the funds. If she is happy with whomever, I can't and won't do anything about it. She interjected and says she is better without me at this point, and I won't survive without her for long, and she goes on and on. I just told her that even if I don't, it is none of her concern anymore. I gave my bank statements to her father who remained silent during the mom's outburst, verified that from about a total of $6,200, my contribution was $4,800. My ex immediately claimed I edited the figure, while her mom has what appeared to me as a genuine surprised face. My ex claims I'm good with a computer, hence able to doctor the bank statement. As proof, I ask her father for his phone, log into the bank where my salary is credited every month, and proceeded to show the deduction made every month coincide with the joint account receiving the transfer. Can only show previous 12 months, any further than that needs to be done at the bank counter. I can't log into the joint account as I closed it. My mistake, I know, so I offered to go to the bank to get another copy of the statements. But her father decided that this was proof enough and gave me $3,000 that my ex didn't spend through direct transfer and another $1,000 cash, out of their collective pocket I guess, didn't ask. He said the balance of $800 and change will be paid in the next two months. Her father asked me to send an email to him as proof I acknowledged that I received the total amount of $4,000 and the balance arrangement, which I did. I apologize to her parents for any perceived wrong I did and any inconvenience caused by me for the duration of our relationship. My father asked me to say this, and we left. My parents didn't say anything during the meet, as they informed me that they are there to keep me level-headed during the meet and won't interfere in any way. Then found out about this from my father a few hours after we got home. Her father called my father. They had a professional relationship prior to their retirement and a cordial one afterwards. Apparently, she told her parents she only took a total of $2,000 from the account and left the balance still in it. That's the whole reason her father asked for my bank statements and he didn't believe me presumably. And her mother's outburst, they thought I accused her and overreacted and made up accusations about the cheating because of jealousy. That it's a ridiculous story I made up about how could she, my ex, fall in love with someone she never met is one of the yarn she spun to her side. I didn't feel the need to show any screenshot to them or anyone as I still deemed it as private. Besides, to me, it's over and done with. I kept screenshots just in case. Now for the new update. Welp, she admitted that she was wrong and wants to start over. Just thought you guys would appreciate that she dared to text me using her mom's phone to do this. To everyone who read this, I sincerely thank you. As I read all of your comments and your advice, I thought about what to say, how to act. But truthfully, I don't know what to do even till the moment of the meet. Currently I'm just sitting by myself. I feel nothing. No satisfaction, no longing or anything. I feel like I'm just here. I know I still love her, I know I will still miss her after a while. This feeling for her for the past 6 years will not go away anytime soon. I won't get back with her because as some of you helped me rationalize that even if we got back together, whatever happens after this, whether it's really her fault or not, I will doubt her first. And that doubt won't go away. Once again guys, thank you. I apologize if the whole thing is too long and for taking your time. Again, I can't thank you people enough, so thank you so much. To people dealing with wild situations, OP kept his mouth shut, provided receipts, and let the ex dig herself into a deeper and deeper hole. You want to scream and rage, but sometimes just letting the other person out themselves creates a much better resolution than getting down in the mud with them. I'd just like to add, this advice also works for anyone dealing with civil or family court. Let the other person tell lies to the judge, let them fabricate a story. Do not say a word until it is your turn to speak. When it's your turn, don't tell an elaborate version of the story. Stick to the facts, don't say the other person is lying, the judge will already know. Show them your evidence and make your speech as exact and concise as possible. Right, people seriously underestimate the value of sticking to facts and providing proof. You get caught up in the emotions of it and it's easy to start talking over the other person or calling them a liar. It's too easy to do. It takes practice to calmly deal with these situations. 
Almost 5k. Damn right I'd want that back. It could have been $500 and I would want it back. My ex and I dated for 6 years. Talked about getting married in the whole 9 yards. Went ring shopping at a very nice jewelry shop owned by a family friend of ours and got a custom made ring for about $10,000 that was exactly to her specifications. Ring came in about a month later, paid for it and picked it up. Had the whole plan down to propose, with her friends and family close by to celebrate. The day before I'm going to propose, she dumps me out of nowhere. Admittedly I had a few problems about a year before with not taking care of myself and my diabetes, and when I admitted it to her, we developed a plan together for me to improve. I improved a ton over the following year, but when she broke up with me, she told me she had been kind of planning it since that admission despite my improvements. Had to return the ring and take a $4,000 loss on it since it was custom, and not one of their normal rings. Still pretty bitter about it. Next month I'm in one of my good buddy's weddings who is still friends with her. We all went to high school together and she's going to be there, and I assume with her boyfriend, I had heard through the grapevine that she's dating someone, but don't look at her social media or anything. Gonna be really interesting. OP's parents, especially his father, gave him good advice. It's amazing to see how parents can be supportive, and still not try to steer things one way or another. And great for the OP being level-headed through a very tough time. The ex-fiancé let a really good one get away. She'll eventually be sorry. OP has a good head on his shoulders. Agreed on the ex, though how she managed to maintain a relationship with someone whose maturity far surpassed hers is beyond me. She claimed he was being immature while she suddenly dumped him for someone she barely knew online. Lied about the situation to her parents and friends to make herself look good or justify her stealing money from OP and use the friends she lied to to harass OP after the breakup. Such a great example of maturity she is. Now for the last story. I left my wife because I'm sick of everything needing to match her aesthetic. I know it seems like a dumb thing to end my marriage over, but after dealing with this for so long, I'm finally done. My wife and I are both in our 30s. We have a daughter. My wife has always been pretty into appearances, but it was never that bad. She just wanted things to look nice when people came over. Then she started an Instagram page for moms and got a massive number of followers. About 400,000 since our daughter was born. Ever since then, I feel like I don't live in a house, I live in an Instagram photo shoot. There can't be any proof that we actually live here. My wife stresses so much about things looking good that she doesn't actually enjoy the moment. She started a fight with me right after our daughter took her first steps because I had put my drink down on the table behind her and it's all she could see and how she'd need to edit it out of the video. She called me a selfish prick for putting my drink down on a coffee table to watch my daughter take her first steps. Our daughter's bedroom is just a mass of beige and cream. There's barely any toys in it, which was fine while our daughter was small, but now she's getting older. My wife refuses to buy her any toys that don't match her aesthetic. My mother took my daughter to the store and let her pick out a toy. She picked out this dollhouse from this show she watches. She got all of the dolls and furniture, and my wife told her she had to keep it at my mother's house because there was no place for it at home. She absolutely had room for it. My wife is convinced I'm leaving for another woman, that I'm having an affair etc. But I'm not. I just can't keep feeling like I live in a museum, where I can't touch or move anything. I can't even build a blanket fort with my kid, without my wife flipping out that they're decorative blankets that she had folded a special way. I'm not going to force my daughter to live in an aesthetic. Editing in, I've tried to encourage her to seek professional help, but she insists this isn't a problem and she doesn't need any therapy. Now for the comments. I would say you are not leaving her because of her addiction to her aesthetic. You are leaving her because she is selfish and obsessed with all that social media nonsense to that point where she puts that nonsense over her family. Good choice bro. Any mommy blogger with a massive following is already putting themselves ahead of their family and especially their kids in my opinion. Those pages are crawling with pedos. After watching it mom uncharted on TikTok, I'll never be able to look at mommy bloggers the same. Literally moms selling photosets of their young daughters to their 80% male followings. I would divorce her too. I don't see how they don't see themselves opening the door wide open for pedos. YouTube had this issue of people putting up or sharing videos of their daughters doing gymnastics in their uniforms. Besides being jerk-off fodder for the pedos, these parents don't understand how even the smallest thing can be identifying information. Your daughter is on the gymnastic team and the uniforms have these colors. Welp, a couple Google searches later and someone is within spitting distance of your kid's school district. I'm not making this up either. I used to be on a dating website and a woman my age at the time had posted a selfie for her profile. 
From her lanyard, polo, and the amount of natural light, I could fairly well assume where she worked and around what shift. I know how that makes me sound, but I promise I'm just some dude. Imagine what someone dedicated would find. I've tried to tell parents this, and they look at me like I'm insane. Like, why is she even bringing up pedos? It doesn't even cross their mind. And it blows my mind, because a lot of these parents are millennials who grew up with the internet, knowing not to share their name or address with strangers, yet post public pics of their kids with location tags every day. It makes no sense. I have a friend who's a mommy influencer. Will had. I couldn't stand seeing how she curated her feet over her children's happiness. All of the happy moments were fake. The kids were mad posing for picture after picture. She would hide the mess, bribe them with treats, get the perfect curated picture for her feed, then proceed to ignore them and interact with her followers. It blew my mind to see the behind the scenes of what looked like a picture perfect life. At least by leaving her, half of the time let's hope, she can actually be allowed to be a messy kid who has some fun. I've commented this before, but I'll never forget this cute little girl at the winter park. Her mom bought her a fancy, very over-the-top hot chocolate that had candy canes, a mountain of whipped cream, and marshmallow snowmen, sprinkles, etc. The little girl was so excited, but the mom had her posing for several pictures with it, and at the end, the girl only had enough energy to keep fake smiling as the hot chocolate melted. Then she and the mom had a sip of it, then threw it out, as it was all melted and not impressive looking anymore. Then the mom sat there, using her phone while ignoring her daughter who started climbing over the decorations, I'm assuming to post on social media. It was very sad to witness.